So with that, uh, those three hypotheses, I began to ask, well, if the bird brain, shown here, can come up with a solution three independent times in evolution, what makes us humans any different from the birds? Do, are we following a similar solution in terms of a brain circuit for vocal learning? And so to answer that question, I compared bird brains to human brains. Now, these two species, this is a songbird and a human, are separated by 300 million years from a common ancestor, as opposed to 65 million uh, amongst birds. And when we make that comparison, the first thing we learn is, can you guess, look at the zebra finch brain here compared to a human brain. What's the big difference here? Brain size does not matter for this complex trait. You can roughly fit 3,000 zebra finch brains into one human brain. Okay. The second lesson we learned here is that another difference is that the human brain has all this cortical folding, whereas the zebra finch brain is uh, the telencephalon, as we call it, or the cerebrum, is smooth. So cortical folding doesn't matter for this complex trait as well. What I'm arguing is that matters is the presence or absence of this neural network. So let's actually take a slice through uh, the human brain and take a slice through the uh, zebra finch brain and uh, make a comparison. And when early comparative neurologists were doing that in the early 1900s, they came up with a theory that we now don't consider accurate anymore, but I want to explain it because it influences how we compare the, the songbird brain and the human brain. And this theory goes as such. Roughly 100 years ago, a guy named Lewin Edinger had, was comparing the different brain structures of reptiles, birds, and mammals, and you know, including humans, and combined Darwin's recent view of evolution, you know, f forming like a tree, and Aristotle's view of scala natura that says animals have, uh, there's some animals with low behavioral complexity and some with more advanced like humans, and even uh, religion in all this, thinking that evolution was progressive, unlike what Darwin thought. He argued that evolution had a purpose, and that purpose was the generation of humans, or man, as they said. And <clears throat> they thought that you can look back into the structures of the human brain, shown here, at the base of the human brain, and find them in more what they considered primitive animals, like fish. And they argued that there was a structure in the fish brain called paleostriatum that uh, was involved in instinctive behavior that was then passed on to in, uh, amphibians. And amphibians involved a, evolved a structure called the archistriatum. And that was then passed on to reptiles. And reptiles involved this new structure here in the human brain called the neostriatum. And this is where the idea of the reptilian brain comes from inside us. And it was called neostriatum. And then reptiles passed on that neostriatum to birds, and birds evolved a new structure called the hypostriatum. Striatum meaning a striated-like structure. And the bird brain was thought to be one large colored purple striatal region here involved in instinctive behavior. And only mammals were thought to have this green colored region which is called cortex. And in humans, or um, um, you know, more advanced mammals, they called it neocortex for new cortex. We now know that this view is wrong. Evolution does not occur in a progressive fashion. The purpose of evolution is not to generate humans, and animals show a lot more behavioral complexity than these early biologists gave them credit for. And a lot of the evidence now shows that, like humans, the bird brain has a large cortical region uh, that I color-coded in green here. What's different about it is that the bird brain cortical region is uh, consists of large clusters of neurons, whereas in mammals it's in layered uh, cortex. Uh, we, birds have this basal ganglia structure in purple and blue here that's similar or homologous to the basal ganglia structures in the human brain, and it's organized similarly, and it, uh, it's also involved in complex behaviors. It's not just for primitive behaviors. So with that aside, um, <clears throat> now I can ask the question, how does the bird brain compare to the human brain for vocal learning structures?